Okay, so we talked about the expected value last time, and what I want to talk about now is the expected value of a function of the random variable. So this comes up um, a lot because we're not necessarily always looking at exactly the random variable. We're, we're doing something to the random variable to get some other number. So here's an example. Um, suppose we play a game where um, you know, we take the coin flips from the last time, and I say, okay, we look at the number of heads that we got, and the possibilities for this are 0, 1, 2, or 3, and that's my random variable x, and then I'm going to pay you some amount, right? So if you get 0 heads, you get $0. If you get 1 head, you get a dollar. If you get 2 heads, you get a dollar. And if you get 3 heads, you get $10, okay? I guess it would be kind of generous to call this a game because it's not really a lot of fun so it's it's the world's most boring game right so now I can say you know how much should I be willing to pay to play this game right uh, if I pay more than the expected value of my payout then I'm getting taken for a ride right I should I should not pay more than I expect to win okay and so um, we want to know if this payout can be viewed as a function of X what is the expected value of G of X, right? Well, again, I kind of do it the same way. I say, okay, with probability, and let's let's remember what the probabilities were. So the probabilities, I'm sorry, I wrote this a little bit messily. So the probability here is an eighth, the probability here is an eighth, the probability here is three eighths and three eighths, right? So I can expect the I can compute the expected value of this function of X by saying, okay, with probability zero, I get payout of zero dollars. I'm sorry, with probability one eighth, I get payout of zero dollars. With probability um, three quarters, I get payout of one dollar, right? With probability one eighth, I get payout of ten dollars. So my expected value is three quarters plus uh, ten eighths, which is five quarters. So overall, I get two dollars as my expected value. So if someone is charging me $3 to play the game, then I'm going to be losing a dollar on average every time I play. So you can see this has immediate applications to casino gambling, for example, right? Clearly, this is the principle behind craps and the roulette wheel and all that stuff. And of course, all of those games are rigged, so the expected value of the payout is just a little bit less than what you bet, so that the house always gets money on the average in the end, right? So. How does this work? I mean, in a way, it seems like obvious, right? So let me just be clear that what's happening here under the hood is that we are kind of creating a new random variable from an old random variable, and then we have a new PMF, right? So if I wanted to be like super uh, detailed about this, let's think about you know how these things work. I have the old sample space. The old sample space had um, eight outcomes originally flipping coins right I had tail 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 head tail 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 head tail head oops tail tail head and then I have cases where I have two heads and cases where I have three heads right this we said is not a random variable because it doesn't have numerical values right so this maps via the random variable into the number line which has the possibilities 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay? Now I'm talking about a new experiment where, you know, I'm, I'm turning the sample space under the hood into a new sample space where there's kind of only three classes, right? There's tail, 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 there's all this other junk here, and then there's head, head, head. And this gets mapped to a new sample space for the random variable where the possible outcomes are 0, 1, and 10, right? And this is viewed as a transformation of g of x. So, I mean, normally you don't have to think about it in such a kind of detailed way, but really this is kind of what we're thinking about is that g of x just turns into a new random variable y, and I have to move the masses of probability around, right? So what used to be 1 8 3 8 3 8 1 8 these outcomes get kind of mapped into groups of possibilities down here, right? So I have a new PMF, it still sums to one, but I may not have exactly the same numbers for the values, okay? So some important properties of the expected value, and I feel like I've already used some of these 
kind of implicitly. So expectation is linear, and what that means is that if I take the expected value of two things, I can just break it up into the expected value of the first thing plus the expected value of the second thing. Um, similarly, if I have a constant, like some constant like 2x, then I can take the constant out of the expected value part because this doesn't have any sort of randomness to it. And if I have something like the expected value of x plus some constant number, then that's just the expected value of x plus the constant. You can think about the constant in a way as like a random variable that has no uncertainty. It's just a PMF that has a spike at the value that you can get at C, right? A different way of saying that is the expected value of a constant is just a constant, okay? So here for constants A and C, okay? So last time I kind of alluded to the fact of, you know, how would I compute the expected value of the binary or the binomial random variable, right? So let's talk about x is a binomial random variable. So what is the PMF of that? Remember, it's got this combinatorial piece, n choose k, and then I have uh, p successes and 1 minus p failures, right? Now, um, computing the expected value of this by the formula would be a headache, right? That would say, okay, well, I have the possible outcomes 0 to n, k times n choose k times p the k times 1 minus p the n minus k. I mean, there's no simplification in the world that is going to make this uh, easy. I mean, it's possible to do, but it's a huge pain, right? But here's a nicer way to think about it, you know, or I could just think of x as the sum of a bunch of coin flips, i.e. Bernoulli trials. We talked about that. That's like saying that the number of heads is really just a sum of a string of 0 or 1 successes or failures, right? I have, you know, n coin flips, and if it's a head, I count 1. If it's a tail, I count 0. And each of these is a Bernoulli random variable. We talked about last time how easy it is to compute that. So the expected value of x is just the expected value of the sum of each of these random variables. And this here, since I have a linear expectation, I can take this out and say, well, it's the sum of these expected values. All these expected values are the same. So it's like saying I have uh, n times the expected value of just one of these guys, which is, we talked about last time, p, right? So this is much easier, and this is kind of intuitive. It's like saying, you know, I flip a coin three times. What's the number expected number of heads I get? It's n times the probability of getting heads, right? So in the case of flipping the coin three times with probability one half of getting a success, it's three times a half is 1.5, which we discovered in the last video. So that makes life a lot easier. So next lecture is going to be about a very special function of a random variable called the variance. And so tune in for that.